CWB is a serious issue in our country. It's become more obvious than ever that it is uh, triggering a number of uh, mental health episodes in a number of Americans that are suffering from cry wolf bombardment syndrome. And some people could have a unnatural um, inclination to over obsess on certain things because of our instincts, the fight or flight within. And then other people may not be aware that there are certain websites and individuals that are deliberately playing them because there is an interest in playing the population. I'm Alex Ansari. Today's date is October 6th, 2018. That's our topic. Uh, feel free to sign up. Please do over at Patreon so we can meet the monthly goal. Right now, I think it's about $89 in monthly support on a collective level from the audience on Patreon. I'd like to see that increase as we get back into the content. I'm more interested, just so you're aware of, in elaborating and articulating some of my outs of the box ideas as opposed to chasing what's on the newswire and doing rip and read. Even if those views could be in the tens of thousands, if I choose to line certain things up and talk about certain topics, although it still takes a lot of work to get that going, I rather speak from my heart and enjoy what it is that I do and to continue doing what I do uh, on a more regular basis. And to do that, I need to go deeper into the thought of why I believe what it is that I believe. It also helps you get to know me and to differentiate myself from other people in the alternative media. And some people may realize this Alex Ansari guy is not for me. He doesn't fit into my narrative or what I want to hear. I'm going to go over here. And that's not a bad thing. The difference between myself and other people is I'm less interested today than ever in a certain amount of subs. To me, it's a matter of uh, being able to share from the heart and being independent of left and right uh, based politics and other things that go in certain directions. I'm here to be myself and express myself. You know, one thing I think about a lot is this idea of the uh, the cry wolf bombardment syndrome causing a problem in um, in even the niche society of uh, of my peers. And as a person who wants to grow, who realizes that it's not about me waking anybody up, but per se, uh, it's, a, it's an act or a practice to be sharing one's truth. And it helps liberate one from the limitations of this matrix or of this reality or of this world. And so for me, it's a spiritual practice. Uh, it's a way of life. To, to be engaged in, uh, in this kind of content. I don't think it's the only lifetime in which I've done this. And I think a lot of us are in this um, incarnation time loop being recycled over and over and over in this type of reality. But that aside, we have a situation where a lot of people have fallen into because of their instincts for fight or flight, disaster news, that's also known as disaster porn, and it's good to be aware and we can talk about uh, solar flares and the electric grid being vulnerable, but that's not something to be aware of. So someone changes their entire lifestyle and becomes someone that freaks out most of the time. I mean, even within that understanding of the solar flares, there is another understanding that maybe there is a, a reset or a sense of balance occurring on a universal level, on a more cosmic level with regards to the larger cycles of the sun or periods in which the sun um, interacts for whatever reason at certain times with the power grid of our planet causing it to fail. I think that everything happens for a reason, including if something like that were to happen and be an act of nature, uh, that maybe uh, things do happen for a reason. You know, I got a flat tire the other day. The nail went into the side of the actual tire itself. And so I'm going to have to buy another tire for $45, put in the order last night. These are not things that I look forward to doing. When I'm already strapped for cash, you know, but uh, do I still think that there are uh, reasons for all things? And do I try to steer away from uh, a conspiratorial worldview in all aspects of my life? As a, For example, it's not going to serve me to go around thinking that someone put the nail in my tire. There are nails on the road. Things do happen, especially when you're living off the grid. And there literally are things like nails that fall off uh, the back of a pickup truck, for example. There's a lot of people that do construction, a lot of people doing a lot of things right now before uh, winter sets in. So there are things that can happen. How do we take that level of understanding and apply it to the regular world so not everything is a conspiracy? Because what a lot of people like to do when they're trying to sling mud at people like myself is compare us to others that they've met 
and I've met a lot of people over the years, they have a prejudice, they have a bias against people that are discussing various conspiracy realities because of the behavior of other people that they've met. There are certain stereotypes, but certain stereotypes aren't upheld by the mainstream media. Certain consensus realities or groupthink, certain collectives of humans may actually lean towards behaving in a certain way to where some of those stereotypes are actually true. Now, when you're someone that covers conspiracy research like myself, but you also come to find uh, out that there's a certain amount of people that are into a certain level of content that are going to have certain ways of looking at the world, which also includes having a similar uh, paranoia about the host of the person giving that information, making conspiracy content a little bit interesting and frightening and full of that anxiety and paranoia energy because most other fields of uh, talk radio, YouTube, uh, videotapes, uh, you even think about the arena of motivational speaking for success as well as self-help, as well as spirituality, as well as just general reporting on politics. Most people don't deal with the super, super charge of the conspiratorial energy coming back at the host. And there is a phrase, and I understand it, and it is playing with a fire, but um, it's dealing with what you focus on. And if the content of certain channels lean to certain areas where they include any conspiratorial thought, it seems like our society is still early in its basic education of what the real conspiracy is, that unfortunately it's going to bring a certain McDonald's conspiracy crowd. Not to knock McDonald's, right? We all may make a mistake once in a while or, or eat a sausage McMuffin. It's more about the metaphor. It's more about the metaphor of quality food with good nutrition that's organic that was made in a loving manner as opposed to the machine kicking things out for the masses. Now the thing with McDonald's versus the the fancy steakhouse or the organic all-you-can-eat buffet, it's basically a difference in cost. Uh, so it's ability to access. Well, with the internet, it may not necessarily be... Um, about how much money they have, it may be about their level of understanding. So some people are just not interested in looking at, quote unquote, the conspiracy from a particular wide lens observer. Big picture, folks, it includes the current president. He's not outside the system. Come on now. Or other examples like that. We can go back 10 years and be talking to the Democrats, you know, as I was. How could you be saying that he's representing change we can believe in when the system is rigged everything you've been saying about bush right i mean the system's rigged then, then why would the system be rigged and then you think you got your guy in with obama and the same thing with the trump people i'm just giving an example of how i'm pretty much alienated from democrats and republicans and it's not an easy path to walk but we've talked about the left right divide um i'm here to focus on the cwb the cry wolf bombardment syndrome. Now, let, let's just talk about the positive first. Are there ways to prevent CWB? Because it's not about money, it's about education. So if someone's willing to educate themselves that there's a level above the level that they're looking at, then they can prevent CWB. If they start thinking that the new world order has all control, that these corporations and everything is, has all control, that, that they don't have control over their emotions, if there was a, a Fukushima event or BP oil spill, well, that's where they want to start their healing process to avoid CWB. Things like meditation, things like travel, things like actual fitness, things like uh, nicotine cessation, if that's an issue, things like... Um, a more responsible use of marijuana if smoking marijuana all day has become a detriment. This obviously counts for alcohol and other things. When you combine uh, any types of things that alter your perception and your heart rate, so you can also be a coffee addict, and I have experience with that too, drink a lot of coffee while I go through information, and you're like on the computer a lot, there's this automatic emotional stress response that comes from being exposed to certain information. And... We could be, if you will, quote unquote, vampired on by other energies, intelligences, things beyond understanding that use the Internet to manipulate us. And what's one of the main platforms in which they do that? It's Facebook. YouTube is also included. 
YouTube is an interesting beast. I'm still in the entry levels of studying uh, it as a form of controlled opposition while also using it to talk with a few hundred people that are my main core audience. And of course, this is after 12 years. This is after 12 years and literally thousands of emails going, Alex, I was unsubscribed to your channel. Alex, you totally dropped off the radar. Alex, I'm glad to see you're back into alternative media. I've been, I've been missing you the last five or 10 years. That's really bizarre when I come across those folks. But a lot of this is cognitive function, and we are dealing with an overall decline in cognitive function since the advent of technology in general. Yes, it allows me to come to you instantaneously. And by the way, last year, I would have to get up early in the morning to upload a one gig file to you. Uh, it looks like my satellite service, I spend, by the way, about 70 a month, but um, typically you'd have to spend a lot more money to get the speed uh, that you need to upload large videos that have been all pixelated. And, and at least I'm at the level now where I have, I, I believe, better than normal audio and video quality, and so this is going to be kind of the standard. Although, although... When someone does want to help out with a better microphone instead of this cheap thing, and that includes making suggestions to something that's that's well within my means of being able to afford, I'll consider a new microphone uh, next year maybe, or may, maybe later on, but it's not in the budget. You know, as for myself, there's a lot of... Uh, or a lot of us are connected going back to the energy thing online. And so I can literally feel the CWB back from elements of the audience and how the solar cycle is affecting us on a collective level, as well as where we are in the lunar. And so there's certain levels of information that people are going to be a little bit more responsive to during certain times, because they're going to be connecting and vibing more to that. And other periods, it won't even be on the radar. Whatever I or someone may have said about the sun or a particular clue, it may not be seen as relevant. What, what will be on the table for a lot of people is what's perceived to be the threat for at the moment. Because it's playing on instinct. It's, it's playing on fight or flight. It's, uh, it's playing on uh, tribalistic tendencies. And there are various forms of tribalism that are based on the illusions of separation. You know, there's a certain amount of people look at me in town or somewhere, especially if I'm, you know, uh, not wearing a button-down shirt. I'm just wearing just normal sweatshirt. You know, I'll look like a bum to them. Others, others, especially if they're paranoid, oh, I look like a cop to them. If I'm looking clean cut or if I'm wearing a certain type of a shirt. See, through the things that people have been through, the trauma, the programming, a lot of people are constantly in threat analysis. And in their threat analysis, they're, after all these years, after all their, their time on Earth and all the access to books and knowledge and, uh, you know, maybe even some direct knowledge of how to actually read someone, how to read someone's energy, how to size somebody up, not just run around assuming like the wrong thing over and over and over and over and over. It's like insanity, right? doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results. A lot of people are misjudging things, people, politics, over and over and over, news headlines, certain people in the media, over and over and over and over without them having that, you know, hitting bottom moment. They're like, okay, okay, maybe my discernment is off. Now, let's say there was someone that was way, way into the Bundy thing. And they were talking about that being all organic. I think there's a lot of evidence to show that um, the federal government favored the Bundys and the heavier sentences were given to those people that pretty much heard the call online. And so the argument for that being a government setup as a honey trap to kind of attract extremists, I think if someone's honestly looking for the truth, they can look at everything that came out in that case and pretty much see that theme. We may not agree on everything. I think there's still some unanswered questions regarding uh, certain things that happened with regards to that. But the very fact that there are unanswered questions, the very fact that that thing was allowed to go on as long as it did and become this this internet live stream special for the whole world to watch with RT there as well. And again, for those that don't know, the wildlife um, refuge takeover in Oregon. And so there's a time for people to go, we may have our support for certain families like the Hammonds or others. We may have our beliefs, 
But there comes a time where people should be cognitively sharp enough to realize when potential agents of the government come riding in. There's other things I can talk about, like what happened with Costilla County. It's still chilling to even talk about it. Place I have nothing to deal with anymore, nothing to do with. But a time in which there were people that were in my community when I was in Costilla County that were literally going to bat and uh, supporting this guy, Bruce D that came in and had his own proposal for uh, sovereign ideology and other things that were thrown in in addition to that. And the whole thing smelled really foul. That's a situation we can have people that are aware of NWO, aware of conspiracies, aware of land takeovers, and aware of people like Mark Kessler, but not for whatever reason be able to put two and two Equals four, man. It doesn't equal 5.3. It doesn't equal 8.7. It equals four. And so there's a lot of global dupes. You know, in the old days, the big bombardment was about the government roundups. And I'm not saying that we're, that we're out of the forest, if you will, but there was a lot of siphoned uh, energy that was redirected to things that didn't happen. And people like Mr. AJ were number one with reporting on and being the number one and the main source of the leak, if you will, or, or the announcement, of course, after it came from Homeland Security. So they would spotlight these martial law drills that were done in 2008, 9, 10, and 11 because there was so much news coverage focused on an all-out economic collapse. Not one like 2008 or 2009. We're talking about one in which people are starving. One in which you need to have your food storage now. And there was a time in which... I was very convinced of that to the point where I bought food, but I think that we should be eating healthier anyways. And one of the ways to do that is to buy bulk. So it's more a matter of what you're buying and how much as opposed to whether or not you're prepping. Like it's good to prep. It's more of a matter of how. And a lot of people prep and they buy stuff that they're not going to eat and they overspend and they do certain things. And, uh, I mentioned before that I do believe with the cycles of the sun, there's a period in which survival products will sell way more, way better. So if I was to chart like the rise in uh, the survival business uh, online, we, we have a kind of a larger cycle, but we're looking at 2009 to 2013 were big years because you had a lot of it ramping up to 2012, but you had the pre-appetizer of the economic collapse could happen anytime now with the actual articles saying that the UN might have to give food rations to American citizens. So that level, that level of trauma causes a certain psychological reaction. What's burnout? Okay, uh, burnout happens when someone can't deal with that anymore and they just don't even want to hear what's in the news. And that's what's been happening to the, the society at large. Even if, you know, your friends and your neighbors may not be into the things that you're into, if you've talked to them about certain things, the CWB comes from a lifetime. It, it predates 9-11. Nothing wrong with having survival skills. The extremist directions in which a lot of our fellow Americans have been taking it for multiple decades, we literally have to go back decades and decades and decades and, and admit where there are cult-like phenomenons where people will start leading uh, and there will be people that almost seem like it's in their DNA blueprint to follow those deceivers. Okay, so there's a couple of documentaries. Unfortunately, they don't talk about good communities where it is not based on a cult, but a lot of communities, intentional communities, are based around uh, somebody's cult of personality or a couple's cult of personality, it being all about them and their property. And this is very, very sad, but it's still an issue. I'm still waiting to see change on that front. And I hope to see it. I hope to see it in my community. I hope to see it in Colorado. I hope to see some positive change in Colorado. On that note, I do believe more now than ever that there is a direct connection between the suicide rates. And there was another story where they found three homeless at the same park dead in a, in a two-week period in that town that I was visiting about an hour away. One guy was found hanging from a tree. I think that what's sad about seeing organizations show their concern about suicides and mental health but not ask for feedback is they're not hearing from people like me and or yourself or others that see the connection with the increased cosmic rays or see the connection with people that are in, I would just describe it as low magnetism. Although I'm not a solar physicist, I'd love to talk with someone 
kind of about the difference in energies between this region in Colorado and say other major areas, but you can see um, in some of those charts and graphs, we're looking at the magnetism, the electromagnetic field, you know, the, the field range in certain areas of the planet. We're at a certain like level and it's different. And it doesn't mean that one area is better or worse than the other. It's that I've come to this conclusion that some of these areas in which some things are slow to change um, takes a longer uh, period for things to change on other levels. And it could be levels that perhaps should change, like change for the better. And so there's a lot of change for the for the better that isn't happening because of just this slow magnetism, this sense of these dominant thought forms. And I'm writing more about this in a private journal, you know, but, but it's the idea of a lot of people being imprisoned by these regions that have these static thought forms, which can also be compared to a spiritual parasite. But ultimately, there are things that are playing on human tribalism all around the world and the illusions of separation. So there are like there, there are these highs and lows, just like a stock market in Western thinking. So there's a period also of someone coming up and um, it, it, it's almost like the wheel of human psychology, you know, feeling better, feeling sadder, depressed. So there's almost like a mental health wheel that is following the news cycle or the news cycle is being driven by. They play off each other, but there are other factors, as I've discussed, the sun and the moon. And we have certain magnetic fluxes. We were coming up, by the way, we've seen an increase in solar activity since my last video. I didn't really know that we were lining up with the coronal hole activity for October 7th in an incoming geomagnetic storm. But some information that I got from the recent video is there's going to be periods in which we can predict during the solar minimum because the 27 day rotation cycle, when the sun's coronal hole is going to come around again and then start releasing more of that fast wind, fast solar wind, knowing my own body, knowing my own physiology. I know that I speak more and make more videos and seem to feel more connected with spirit and just mo motivation in general when there's more geomagnetic activity. Now in the past, I talk about my younger years. I just wasn't centered. I just wasn't centered on my path. So my extra energy was spent getting myself in trouble when I was 20. Now that I'm 38, right, and I feel that same energy of now go do something, go, it's not go party or it's not go this, though I wasn't really much of a partier. Um, it's, we had this energy and a lot of people are missing the knowledge that we need to use it in a mindful way. Let's get back though to the bombardment syndrome. A lot of people don't realize that if they're going to sit there fixating all these negative images, at one point they could just check out from being aware. They can check out from even maintaining their own health, which is important to being a survival survivalist. Uh, they can start, um, the mental illness could kick in and a lot of it, right, could be related to the solar cycle. So now that we're going to a solar minimum, some people might be struggling with depression, uh, low motivation, and uh, a lot of lower emotions. Uh, things of that nature. Comment sections are always a good barometer of, of where people are at. So watch a popular video, for example. And if you're curious where people are vibing, take a look at the comment section. But you can also see the split in psychology to where most of the nation is, uh, is waking up to the Alex Jones deception. Even if they're not waking up to the full conspiracy, if you will, and some people are still a part of it, they're waking up to part of the role that he's played. But you can still find videos to where he's still acting in a, uh, a less than competent manner. Even if somebody likes him, there's still a place to uh, see him for what he is, right? And not, not treat him like he's some sort of a god or a deity, right? Or some sort of Obi-Wan Kenobi. However, we now live in the type of niche reality where technology can propagate a particular idea, including mental insanity or a insane person, there are still people that are, bottom line, worshiping him ounce for ounce, pound for pound. And nobody should be worshiped, period. And that includes spiritual deities. So if you're a Christian and you're looking at the the, the teachings of Jesus, um, I don't think that it's your role to go around worshiping the ground that he walked on and all of the, say, sweating and crying, you know, to be catching up those tears and then to be putting the, you know, on the, now, now you're like, now, now you got the, the oil of Jesus on you. And I'm just using that as I speak off the top of my head. 
of a lot of the uh, the Messiah complex energy that people are still going to take or pull from pop culture personality people. And they will treat people like actual Messiah-like figures or even above as people try to play that role. And why would they play that role when they know that that's, that's bunk? Because people like Mr. AJ are addicted to that cult of personality. So they've like ramped up this artificial understanding of the conspiracy. And I've talked about this in other videos. So a lot of people suffering from CWB and that encompasses a lot of things. They're going to look at the years of uh, the Alex Jones uh, fake predictive programming, if you will. <laughs> you know, instead of things that actually have happened and some have, but some things haven't been difficult to forecast. I know I don't have uh, access to intelligence agencies. I don't have access to certain things, but I have access to my own mind. So if my own mind is focused, right, and someone has kind of a basic grasp of what's going on, it's not difficult to understand and talk about certain things that are taking place. Um, takes a little bit more skill to get a little bit of accuracy, though, if you're discussing trends. You know, a lot of people get on board the trend game and they're not actually accurate. So I believe Alex Jones knows more of the truth than what he's what he's let on, but I'm just using him as an example. But he can direct things on a global level to perceive conspiracy theories to be a specific way. When people, you know, start thinking about 9-11, they're not going to go, well, who else has talked about 9-11 from a contrarian view? They're going to hear maybe his latest statements on valuetainment as he tries to sputter out his uh, his updated talking points on 9-11. And so a lot of people aren't even really exposed to, because what is the truth anyways? In my opinion, the truth versus someone else's opinion of the truth. That's all relative on top of it. And I realize that and remind us all that. So there isn't like, like there is with other fields, a barometer of what is the truth, what is not the truth. The mainstream media basically says, well, all these people are crazy, period. But we're right. We have our own conspiracy theories about Russia, but we're still going to crap on those people on YouTube that have been questioning Russia and haven't been trusting Russia, we're going to act like we're the only ones that exist. So the mainstream media now plays that cult of personality. And see, it's going to be in the instinct of the population, no matter what, to be looking for information about the conspiracy, even if they think they're anti-conspiracy theory. It's in our bones. It's it's in our nature. Okay, it is It is in our nature to be forecasters of what's going on with the weather, to be wondering what's going to be happening with the crops that follow, what's going to be happening with the health of the children. You know, so there's going to be naturally interest in certain areas regarding vaccines, health, wellness, because these things deal with the maternal. One thing women should not forget, though, is what is happening globally. There are far too many women that discuss only health and wellness and what's going on with their own baby and vice for other American or Western babies. And they're forgetting that there is a energetic toxicity, even if they try to be super spiritual, um, it can be something like someone's trying too hard to just try to pretend that things aren't happening. This isn't happening. This isn't happening. I'm going to live in a pretty reality with unicorns. And so, look, it's, it's great to have goals and to be goal-oriented and have goal channels. But we also need to be able to be grounded in reality and not be doing the uh, serenity now thing where it's just being buried and stuffed. A lot of people are burying and stuffing awareness of what's really going on. And, and they want to use Alex Jones and others as an excuse for them not to look at the truth. Well, screw that guy. Oh, so it's all a lie. So there are no conspiracies. And so there are ways in which people are talking themselves down from looking, looking under the rug, looking for the truth. They're looking for excuses to stay asleep. Let's talk about treatment. So we do have things like walking in nature. Um, I think that it's powerful to speak even if you're not recording yourself. I think that's important to keep a truth journal and to be able to, uh, if, if you believe in spirituality, um, there could be specific advice to those that are atheists or those that are nihilists, but I don't think that's a healthy worldview. I mean, I think that's part of the problem. I dealt with a lot of that in Portland. I've dealt with a lot of that here. It's this nihilistic, hateful uh, disdain for for truth and information and other perspectives. It's ultimately why I live off the uh, live off the grid and I stay out of town most of the time, except for resources. I stop trying to outreach to people even locally. I, I've I've shut down on that level, and I'm going to work harder on doing what I do online and appreciating YouTube for what it is, even if financially it's thrown some of us under the bus. I appreciate those of you that do visit 
Patreon and those that do follow the PayPal link and those that do sign up at outs of the box vhx.tv which is my on-demand bonus channel uh, because this is me creating my own reality and having to believe in myself in order for that reality to be built otherwise uh, if there's going to be the perception of failure and the perception of certain things our minds can help it happen and I've seen what my mind has done through my own words especially with being centered here off the grid and periods where I've been uncentered and where unlucky things have happened Unlucky things have happened like flat tires during periods in which I've been uncentered. And so I've been able to find a spiritual connection, an energetic connection, a universal beyond myself but connected to myself explanation for things that override conspiracy. And I think that's the thing that helps me keep it together and helps me understand that not everything is a conspiracy. And that's ultimately what alienates a lot of people that are into conspiracies but have the nihilistic worldview or the worldview that some politician is now saving us from the conspiracy. I mean, pick your poison. There's a number of different narratives that people believe by the millions that my outside the box beliefs do not endorse as outside the box, as the awakening, as the shift. I've been through so many from the left and the right, from the urban society to the rule, saying that things have changed now. This is the right group. That's the wrong group. And it's all BS. It's all BS front to back. The only thing real and genuine to me is people that have compassion for those people that have been wrongly demonized and are being back, uh, bombed back to the Stone Age. But with regards to future America, future Americans, I don't mean the ones that are alive now. I mean, at a, at a future dystopian date with a unfortunate destiny, I see a lot of Americans being targeted and a formula that's been used on the Middle East, the way that they propagandized them to almost be subhumans. I could see the same thing coming around to Americans um, and blaming them for what's been taking place in the Middle East. And the difficulty that Americans are going to have in, in, in fighting back against that future demonization is that enough of them were duped into demonizing other people when they were told they were ISIS. And a lot of things that are happening now, including things that haven't happened that could, like, for example, what if they whipped up enough um, fear in this country to where people wanted to see certain types of people put into internment centers? Would that be a plus? Right? Would that be a plus even if they told you that it was a threat, that if they didn't do it, that things would get worse? Would that be a plus for America? Would that be a plus for American image? Would that be a plus for white American image on a long-term level? Or would that be actually be a detriment and something that would be used as propaganda that could be used over and over and over? Because let me tell you this, regardless of views on 9-11. 9-11 was used as the excuse against a wide range of people overseas, regardless of views on, on Islam. Prior to 9-11, this, that level, although there were wars and there was the Gulf War and there was an agenda, it wasn't in our consciousness until 9-11. And 9-11 basically gave the Western military industrial complex a killing pass. So don't think that there are other forms of these killing passes that are being created by those. I'm not saying in, uh, in, in smoke filled rooms, you don't know who these people are or where, but somewhere that plan X is in existence and it's based on creating, if you will, a conspiracy theory and using it to demonize the next round of people or the next round of Americans. And it's unfortunate. So, this, this brings us to center with this truth. Conspiracy theory is weaponized. And what you don't want to do is use the weaponization yourself if you're having a bad, uh, not only day, but part of your life because things didn't turn out a particular way. When someone goes about the lifestyle of using conspiracy theory to target innocent people or to make it about the people versus the people instead of realizing the real system. The real system that's bombing people back to the Stone Age isn't favoring those people. If anything, it will relocate people. There could be a manufactured immigration crisis that adds gasoline, not water, not flour, not some other thing that you might use when there's a fire in a kitchen to put out the fire, but gasoline, explosives, fireworks, things of that nature. They're doing these things. All these things are going. And the people that have actually been part of the bombardment of those regions are sitting up on stage saying they care about refugees, confusing people that are on the far right, telegraphing this false reality that somebody cares about those people so they now can fight internally and say that the enemy is internal. So what's happened now is way more advanced than whatever allegedly happened in Nazi Germany. And that's the bottom line. 
There are people that are in some other twilight zone where they're trying to argue that that either didn't happen or that the dude was a good guy. When the greater reality is what's happening now, for example, in these foreign countries, has exceeded likely what the Nazis did during that period, before all this is done. There is there is no sign of anything being reversed. ISIS is a controlled group that's going through the Middle East, doing zigzags, lefts and rights, and more of them are dying than Americans. This is the reality. But the moment, the moment that a number of Americans or Westerners could end up unfortunately being targeted, if that's the plan, then they can use that as the excuse to take the, the clamp down or the uh, tyrannical super state with the prisons to the next level. And I think that's something that a lot of people are fearing at this time, whether it comes from the current administration or something that follows. It's not about him. It wasn't about Obama. It wasn't about Bush. So the possibility of something like that happening exists indefinitely. And so how do people find healing from things like this? Getting off social media, getting off Facebook, not, not letting the YouTube autoplay dictate your reality is, is critical. You can do other healthy things. You can juice. You can lift weights. But if your mind isn't right, doesn't matter if you're going out hiking. Doesn't matter if you go to church and you go to the, you know, and you go to the law of attraction uh, workshop and you're creating your own reality. And look, we're creating our own reality whether we're aware of it or using discipline or meditation or not. You know, a lot of the people would say, "I don't want to look at that. That's negative." They're creating their own reality. They're calling that person and their information negative. They're playing a judgment. They're trapped in that Western mind. There's a lot of Western women that are trapped in their Western mind. They want to dance around Eastern teachings and incorporate that into their spirituality, their modern buffet. Take what you want and leave the rest buffet. But it doesn't work out that way. It leaves a little bit of indigestion when you're dealing with that type of uh, pick and choose. You know, basic morality, basic compassion, going beyond the illusions of separation, going beyond superiority complexes and egos, being able to understand that other people have truths as well, that it isn't about that one person's spiritual. See, these are like basic things, but a lot of people just like jump beyond that. I'm going to skip this and charge $1,100 for my spiritualist lecture. And I've said in other videos, but I'll do a reminder here, there's a parallel between the fake spiritualists and uh, people that are on the fake side of the conspiracy. That's why you'll see certain websites promoting fake channeling, and also promoting people like Benjamin Fulford. Certain keywords will be there. And people that think that they've escaped, right, uh, certain levels of research for years, think they can kind of get an update by going to some of these low-grade websites run by anonymous people, sometimes in our country, sometimes in other countries. Somebody sent me a link to one website. It was based in Canada. It was Starship Picture Big Picture. It was like one of the worst fake news websites that I've ever seen in my life. And instead of get upset at the person, though, that Senate, again, it has to be brought up that people actually believe this. But unfortunately, because of the ego problem, people aren't willing to look in the mirror and go, oh, this is what happens when I say I don't want to know what's going on for 10 years. Then the you-know-what starts to hit the fan. Then you start to go to Google and look at some of the first websites or look at some of these trashy sites. And people may like to hear about the ascension and the shift. And uh, people need to be able to take constructive feedback. And they can like being uh, sweet-talked with the lingo. Oh, I like this word. I, I associate with that word. Oh, this is like in line with my ideas. Well, maybe if they're in line with my ideas, maybe some of their uh, geopolitical information uh, about the deep state uh, might actually be legitimate. And for people that think that they're uh, legitimate in their research about the deep state and their interpretation of the political structure— are they sitting here and uh, denying that there are websites that have a bridge between that and the fake channeled messages that are coming from the archangels? Just like I've said for years, uh, especially in recent years, somebody could be all for Trump and be able to go, well, the things that Trump actually proposes and talks about, uh, yeah, that's not like 9-11 truth stuff. And, and how's this guy Alex Jones? How's he associated with this guy Alex Jones? Here's what Alex Jones said about cops eight years ago. So there's just been that kind of drop off and the people going, well, I like Trump. Yeah, but Trump likes this dude. Well, well, you know, and it's like it is like a brain fart. But Alex Jones can give them enough honey and rage of what they're looking for to match the Trump narrative now. 
that AJ gets a pass on whatever narratives he was putting out four years ago, eight years ago, 12 years ago. So people are willing to sell themselves out is what I'm saying. Just to be able to hear someone spew out propaganda from a fellow tribal member. And of course, as I said for years, uh, when people watch people on YouTube that seems to be someone more like them, it could be racially even, something as simple as that. It could be something that they're angry about a particular region. Those videos have the potential to go viral because they're based on playing victim. Maybe in a particular region and other people victimizing them. And there could be a large collective thought form that revolves around that. That, that theme, that title, that thing could be its own thing that takes that place, that person, to monetary success. And the whole thing was based on pointing externally instead of how do we become better people? How do we improve some of these areas where there's so many homeless? Instead of just exploiting those homeless and making fun of those homeless and things of that nature, right? How do we be better people? What does real community look like? You know, it would actually be several years ago that I started making videos about intentional communities, really missing that sense of community. And if it was there, if people organizing some of those things or even viewers of my channel, that I'd be willing to even go out to some of these areas in rural Colorado. A lot of you, though, are far beyond this area. And it's been a long time since I've known what it's like to be amongst uh, community. But you know one of the reasons that... Uh, that that happens, unfortunately, going back to going back to the CWB, cry wolf bombardment. You know, part of the cry wolf bombardment is deeper seeds of paranoia that were planted before 9-11. So back in the COINTELPRO days and things like that, people in Portland were already, um, I want you to think about how normal it is for someone to find talk like this, maybe not like mine, but talk that's in the counterculture um, I, I'm really not liking using this word conspiratorial too many times. We need to use more, more creative words other than that. But, um, you know, just the contrarian, um, outside the box to say that generally tone in nature. Uh, there's a lot of channels out there. We may not agree, but people are doing their own outside the box thing, you know? And, uh, the thing is, People would say, like, in 2006, is really really comes to mind. I guess Bush really scared him, whereas I guess Clinton didn't. But uh, it was like people couldn't believe that I had a cable access TV show, that I wasn't already dead. People truly believed that if they were to be a, a friend of mine, that something bad would happen to them, or that their email would come under surveillance. I can go on and on and on. And when you when you meet with people... And you hear all these different stories over all these years. This doesn't sound like a strong population with a strong backbone, with any strong faith in, in true spirituality. Especially those people who think they're spiritual, tap into these archangels, but are very much afraid of spiritual parasites. Afraid of talking about them, afraid of people that try to expose them, trying to say that these things don't even exist when ultimately they are afraid. And there was this type of tone that I felt. It wasn't just fear of government. It was fear of coming up on another radar they would prefer doesn't even exist. They would prefer not to know about theories about the other radar. Those people are crazy. So I also got a lot from the progressives. You make us look bad. We're progressive. You're not. Like they're concerned about Bush. They're concerned about torture. They're concerned about drones. They're concerned about the JTTF. And I'm there concerned about all those issues with them. But I had other things or parts of my demeanor, maybe just being emotional and expressive. Where there's like, no, 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 that's a no-no. You have a level of expressiveness. Um, but I do remember when a friend said once, you know, that look in your eyes, the, uh, you're too excited, that's too much. And that stuck with me for a lifetime. But I would come to realize, and I guess thank him, all he's doing is just telling me the truth. There's a certain look about me when I'm looking and I'm excited and I have passion and I have vigor. That it looks frightening to people. It looks like I might be a threat. Or some sort of uh, uh, wild, feral human from the overseas world that Obama let in through some sort of program. You know, there, there's a certain level to me that one could describe as wild, feral, um, ethnic, uh, diverse, uh, things of that nature. And I could be put into that box where I could be at a coffee shop. I don't even go to the local coffee shops anymore. And a couple of guys could be looking up, looking at my direction, saying to themselves, yeah, you know what? Obama really effed up this country with immigration. And then looking back over at me. How many of you can actually say that you've had an experience that's kind of like that? And of course, without even saying a word, see, 
what I've realized since living in a small town, you can link an offer to give someone an ebook for free or to suggest a video and totally put aside politics and accept them for them. But there's still this, oh, you're like those people that are back to the CWB. Somebody could be bombarded with um, things that a friend told them that was worried about something collapsing back in 1978 or 1988 or 80. And, uh, you know, they can have memories, for example, of someone being a little over the top. And that person that they're having memories of wasn't even someone that as a spiritual practice put themselves out there in their real name to talk about maybe the spiritual overtones to all this. And they can still not be able to differentiate between myself and the things that I'm talking about and the behaviors of their crazy uncle, their crazy friend, their crazy dad, their crazy grandpa, their crazy whatever. And right now, it could be crazy people that they're, that they're being trolled by. And someone could be thinking, and they are now, that all these people that are into talking about them or conspiracy ideas are all right. And that is a falsehood. I'm someone that's an independent that's more trolled by alt-right folks than people on the left for being outside the left-right paradigm. But if you just troll people to a certain level, they either stop what they're doing or join sides um, or, or, or affect the content in some other way. Or someone could respond by um, choosing to partake in the war of, of energies. And that's what's happening. Even people that are angry at the alt-right and the alt-right this and the alt-right that or people that are on a certain wavelength, I'm not exactly saying that all those people, including protesters, haven't figured out or are showing a more compassionate side than the people that they're criticizing. More or less, uh, put aside this left and right and just look at society as it is in general and where it's going. And it's still pretty much the same society that's living off the bones of the dying world. Right? That uses things like perfume and cologne still as part of a, primarily the, the mating process. Or, or what someone's bank balance uh, is. Or what their social media activity is as opposed to what kind of a human being they are. Whether or not they're a good person or bad. You know, and so in the pursuit of happiness, right? People just want to be happy. A lot of people, uh, we're going to wrap things up because uh, we're low on battery power. A lot of people are going to filter out people that encourage them to think too much about their spiritual life, their physical life, or their mental health. And so there's a little bit of trauma and barbar bombardment from all the false spiritual teachers and religions and truth. But ultimately, people are using that as an excuse to remain asleep. Because a lot of people don't know what it means to even be on the path of truth. So I'm going to end my thoughts there. Uh, find ways to prevent CWB, cry wolf bombardment syndrome, from manifesting in your own life. What works for you, just like healthy nutrition, relationship advice, other things, may not work for someone else. So there are certain things that build you up 